All right, welcome to Java Programming Chapter 1 Terms Review. This is just a PowerPoint demonstration of all the terms we went over in the previous lessons. And so let's begin. Whoops, there we go. Co first, we'll start with comments. There is the end of line comment. Oops. Um, they are designated with two forward slashes followed by the text example right there. Uh, traditional comment for multiple line or multiple line comments uh, designated with a forward slash and an asterisk and closed with an asterisk and a forward slash. These are used to print over multiple lines as the example shows. Normally they'd stay lined up. Um, I was just getting annoyed with how PowerPoint works there. Um, and then last is the Java dot comments, which is the forward slash with two asterisks and ended with an asterisk and a forward slash. That's not exactly how it looks, but um, if you know how it opens and how it closes, um, that's pretty much all you need. So next, we will go on to keywords. And before I continue, uh, if I'm going too fast, just pause the video, read them, write them down if you need to. Um, but yeah, so keywords um, or reserved words are used by Java to, to declare or state something. Example, public class, example one. Um, the public in class states that example one is a class and it's public. So some keywords are public, class, void, int, private, etc. We talk about more later. Identifier is a series of characters consisting of letters, digits, underscores, and dollar signs. It does not start with a number or consist of spaces. Um, contain spaces would be a better way to write that, but either way. Um, like welcome one, dollar sign value, m underscore input field, those are all correct. Um, one number input space field, are those are incorrect. So don't do things like that. And then Java case or Java is case sensitive. Public and capital P public are not the same. They're different. Um, so just remember that. Escape characters. Um, an escape character is designated with a backslash. It has special meaning to system.out's print methods. Um, there here I listed some of the escape sequences, such as Backslash n is a new line character, and it positions the cursor on a new line. The backslash t is a horizontal tab; it moves the cursor to the next tab spot or next tab stop. Um, the backslash and r will position the cursor at the beginning of a current line. A backslash and a backslash is used to print a backslash character, and a backslash and a quotation mark is used to put quotes inside of the print. Um, and I put an example for this one just to explain it a little better. You can see that system.out.print, normally you'd have to put your text in quotation marks. So if you want your text to show up in quotation marks when it prints, you need to put a backslash quotation mark words, backslash quotation mark, and then continue like you normally would. And there you see it, pr it prints, hello world. In, pr or in quotation marks. So we'll move on to the next one here. Import declarations. Uh, first, a package. A package is a Java program in like dot .class files are grouped into packages. Um, this helps find certain programs or certain parts of things that are needed for import. So in an import declaration, um, I, I threw in the there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Use pre-existing Java programs. So this is where the import method comes in handy, and in this chapter I demonstrated the import of the scanner class. Um, so it's used, import is used to import packages with needed class files, such as import java.util.scanner. And then later we get into using other um, java.utils, and eventually if you are using many of them in one um, in one program, instead of doing import java.util.scanner, import java.util.random, which is another one, and keep repeating them on different lines, you'll be able to just do java.util.asterisk, which means all of the um, 
classes or files in the java.util package. So we'll move on here. And the scanner class, talking more in depth about it, um, since we used it quite a bit in this chapter. The scanner is used to read information input by the user, such as an integer or a string. And then we'll talk about variables a little bit. Variables are words or numbers set using a keyword such as int or string. And you noticed I didn't highlight string with purple, because when you use that, um, it does not show up like that in Eclipse, so I'm, and since that's what I'm using, I'm just leaving it like that. Um, they need to be declared for use with scanner. Example, int x and int y, which would need to be on separate lines. I was just running out of room. Um, then, in order to use the next example, the system.out.print, enter first integer, and under that x equals input dot next int, in order for that input dot next int to work, um, to create x like that, x needs to be already declared as a variable, which we did at the top there, int x. Um, basically what that is saying is int x, that variable, is a spot in the computer's memory where x equals input dot next int will be stored. So if we do that, it'll say we enter 5, that'll store 5 in variable int x until and that'll stay until x is declared as something new so say we have um another line further down in the program that tells you to declare x as something else and you put 7 then x will be the 5 in x will be replaced with 7 um it's pretty hard to explain there's a fairly decent diagram program in the book I was talking about um that kind of explains it a little more in depth. Um, again, I can't I can't just throw the book on YouTube. Um, so if you want to get severely in depth with that, I would recommend checking out this book. It's very helpful. Um, so we'll move on here, and then system dot out dot print f. Um, I started to go into more detail with this and show uh, why it's a little more helpful than when I showed it previously in the chapter. Um, it's used to print uh, stored data, is how I put it here, um, such as variables that you already have data stored in, like x and y. Um, in the example we used in, I believe, lesson 4, if I remember correctly, uh, we created the two variables, num1 and num2, and then we also created sum, which was num1 plus num2. So once that is stored in that part of the memory, sum equals whatever num1 plus num2 was, then when we use system.out.printf, when we write sum is percent %d, the percent %d is basically a placeholder, and then after the comma we put what will be replaced there, and it says sum. So whatever is stored as sum will be put into the percent %d. And I kind of explained that right underneath there. Alright. I believe this is the last one. The if statements. Um, and I put um, like an example there. Uh, if x equals y. And that equals equals. The if keyword is used for making decisions in programs. Such as in the comparison example um, we showed. And I believe that was lesson 4. Um, the if statement is followed by a system.outprint um, or printf. Either way, I believe it's usually printf, um, which is underneath and tabbed in slightly from the if statement. And that will only print as long as the if statement above is true. So if we write if x equals equals y, and then underneath that it's system.out.print x equals y that will only print if previously when uh, the user inputted x and inputted y if those did equal then it'll print that it equals hang on let me get rid of that it will print that it equals there so that is basically all um, you need to know for this chapter um, again if you if you're writing this down or taking notes for any reason 
feel free to go back or pause the video. Um, I will be putting this into a playlist so it's easier to find previous um, lessons and examples. And we'll be starting Chapter 2 fairly soon. So thanks for watching.